Oh, did you want to go with us? You are so pretentious. A daughter-in-law isn't my family. I would never take you on a family vacation. My mother-in-law mocked me. Have you forgotten what you're staying here for? You are the housekeeper. You're supposed to be taking care of my mother. My husband smirked at the comment. You don't even work, but only want to have fun. You're too naive to think life is that easy. Haven't you grown up yet? You should at least take good care of my grandmother. Have fun. And then my husband and mother-in-law left for a one-week trip to Bahamas. They left me and my grandmother-in-law, who was injured and needed nursing care. In addition to taking care of her, I was forced to take up all the household chores in my in-laws' house. I felt a sense of helplessness. I wasn't a maid or a nurse. Why should I be treated like this? With bottled-up anger, I went to my grandmother-in-law's room. But the moment I opened the door, how did you... I was incapacitated by the shock. My grandmother-in-law was supposed to be injured and unable to stand up, but was standing up firmly on both feet. She walked up to me with steady steps and put on a beautiful smile. Let's show these two what we can do. My name is Beth. I used to work as a caregiver. I quit the job to become a housewife when I got married. I had just returned home from shopping and put my bags down on the table when my phone vibrated. It was an incoming call from Adam, my husband. He should have been at work at that hour. It was strange for him to call me. I answered the phone, feeling a little uneasy. Hello? Honey? What's going on? Oh man, you know what? I got a little upset by what he said next. Maggie, my grandmother-in-law, had broken her leg and was unable to move. I was taken aback to hear that such an energetic woman who walked with a stride had slipped and fallen down while taking a walk. Even though she was healthy, she was quite old. I didn't know the extent of her injuries, but there was a good chance that she may become bedridden from now on. I knew she might need nursing care someday, but I never expected it to be so soon. My mom will take care of her until she gets better, but it's going to be hard for her to do it alone, you know? So I'd like you to stay with them during this time. My mother-in-law, Kathy, lived with Maggie. She had no experience in nursing care unlike me, so they thought it would be more reassuring to have me there. I have often visited my in-law's house and interacted with Maggie. Whenever I saw her, she was always cheerful and made me feel at ease. I liked her very much. If there was anything I could do, of course I was going to help. I eagerly agreed to Adam's proposal. The next day, I went to my in-law's house alone. Adam had to work, so I was the only one staying with them. I looked up at the magnificent gate that I must have passed through many times. I had never paid much attention to it before. My in-law's house was a grand colonial-style mansion. The yard was beautifully landscaped with large pine trees and autumn leaves. When I thought about staying there for a few months, it made me a little nervous. I realized that visiting and living in a house was completely different. As I walked the path leading up to the front door, I took a deep breath. Welcome, Beth. I am so glad you could stay with us. Thank you. I am happy to be of your help. Kathy greeted me at the door. I had a bit of a hard time with her. She had two sides, and if she didn't like something, she got into a bad mood instantly. I had kept a distance from her ever since she gave me a sarcastic remark. 
how is Maggie doing? She seems fine, to the point I'm getting annoyed. After exchanging a few words, she answered with a laugh about Maggie. I knew she was joking, but I sensed the truth in her words and felt a prickle in my stomach. I wasn't a fan of her at all. I wanted to get away from her as soon as possible. I think she's in her room. Why don't you go and see her? I gladly took her suggestion. Hi, Maggie. Oh, Beth. I am sorry. It's become such a big deal. I was a little relieved to see her sitting on the bed, looking as healthy as before. But the cast from her waist to her right leg looked painful. According to her, when she slipped, she fell on her buttocks and broke the base of her thigh. When I worked at a nursing home, I once took care of a patient who had the same fracture. I remembered how hard and painful it was for the patients to move around. If there is anything I can do to help you, please let me know. Don't worry too much. Just make yourself at home. I took her hands, and she returned her usual gentle smile. About a month after I started staying at my in-laws' house, hey Beth, there's a lot of raw garbage in the bin. I told you to keep it clean. Kathy yelled at me from the porch while I was hanging the sheets in the yard. I was completely exhausted. In addition to taking care of Maggie, I became responsible for all the housework there. Within three days of my arrival, Kathy abandoned it and threw it at me. Well, why don't you do it? I am busy right now. I talked back to her. By the time I realized what I had done. It was too late. She snickered and started ranting. How dare you talk to me like that when you're staying at my house? Don't you have manners? Oops, my mouth slipped. If I raised even one protest, she came back with twice as much sarcasm. I, of course, stood my ground in the beginning. But I became tired and stopped arguing after going through it every time. Since you married into my family, it's your duty to serve us, you know. Am I saying something wrong? I don't think so. She continued until I admitted my fault. Yes, you're right. I was wrong. I said the usual words. Okay, good. She walked away towards the living room. I had just finished most of my chores and was about to take a break when I received a call. I looked at the name and sighed for the unknown times. Hey, why haven't you done my laundry? Adam's angry shout came from the phone. Not only Kathy, but I had another cause of my exhaustion. It was my husband. He stayed at home because of his commute, which meant that there were chores that needed to be attended to there as well. In addition to taking care of Maggie, I had to take care of everyone's chores. I don't have time to take care of things there. Do it yourself. It wasn't like he couldn't cook or do laundry. In fact, for a while after we got married. He sometimes took the initiative in doing the housework. He became completely dependent on me, though. He wasn't pleased with my answer and raised his voice even more. What are you talking about? You are a stay-at-home wife. You get all the time in the world, don't you? Why can't you even do this? He put himself on the back burner and put all the blame on me. The way he said it was just like Kathy, and I lost all energy to talk back to him. I moved the noisy phone away from my ear, hung up on him, and then threw it on the couch in a fit of anger. At that moment, the door opened and Kathy peeked out. I stiffened, expecting her to say something. I'm going out for a while. You stay here. Um, sure. 
and as soon as she said it, she was gone. Ever since I came her, I felt that she had been going out more often. I wondered if it was to force me to do the housework. I was also fed up with myself for thinking negatively like this in those days. No matter how busy I was, neither Kathy nor Adam helped me. On the contrary, they complained to me. I felt low from their uncaring attitudes. Only Maggie, who could not move, cared and worried about me. Though I was exhausted both mentally and physically, there was something to be happy about. Maggie's leg was gradually getting better. The part she broke could have made her bedridden if unlucky. She had been going to rehab regularly, and her leg was getting better little by little. I felt very relieved seeing her like that. Thank you for everything. It's all thanks to you. On the way back from the hospital, she kept thanking me fervently, and I was uncomfortable. No, not at all. But I'm glad you're getting better. The sun shined on my hands as I gripped the steering wheel. It was a nice sunny day, the first in a long time. Maybe I should have her take her meal out on the porch. I'll make sure to repay you for this favor. I didn't really understand what she meant at the time. Three months have passed since I started staying with my in-laws. I finished putting away the dinner, and when I emerged into the living room, Kathy was there. She had a large suitcase open and was humming a tune. Hey, Kathy, what's going on? She stopped packing and looked at me. Oh, right, I forgot to tell you. I'm going to the Bahamas tomorrow. Pardon me? I thought I had misheard her, so I asked her back. She must have been in a good mood because she said again, Bahamas, Bahamas, and went back to packing her bags. It was usual for her to go out somewhere, but going abroad was totally out of the blue. She should have at least consulted with me beforehand. She said without even looking at me. Take care of my mother, okay? I kept my mouth shut. It didn't matter what I said to her. Besides, even if she was at home, she didn't take care of Maggie or do the housework. It made no difference. If anything, I felt better for not having to deal with her usual sarcasm. I wanted her to leave as soon as possible. I drifted off to sleep, complaining. The next morning, I heard someone coming into the house, and then the living room door opened. Mom, are you ready? Adam, I've been waiting for you. I heard his name and came out of the kitchen in surprise. Honey, what are you doing here? For some reason, he was standing there. It was a weekday, and he should have been at work by now. Hey, didn't you know? The trip to the Bahamas. Yeah, I know, but why are you here? Well, I'm going with my mom. What are you? He said it so matter-of-factly that I was absolutely stunned. Kathy must have misunderstood my surprised face and smirked at me. Oh, perhaps you wanted to go with us, Beth. You are so pretentious. You have my mother to take care of. Have you forgotten what you came here for? You're my daughter-in-law. You're supposed to take care of my family. Adam, who apparently took her words to heart, also grimaced at me. You haven't been doing much housework lately and have been really useless. You don't even do your duty, but want to have fun? You're ridiculous. At least. Take care of my grandma properly. You used to be a pro. No, I, I didn't know where to begin my argument with such beside-the-point sarcasm and accusation. Still, I had to say something. 
When I opened my mouth, Kathy looked at her watch and exclaimed, "We were running late." Well then, take care of my grandma. The two of them hurried to the front door. I naturally followed them, but the door closed in front of me mercilessly. The hallway was darkened with the sound of a heavy thud. I stood there looking at the closed door. I wondered if Adam had been preparing for the trip while I had been busy being a maid. I did all the housework, cared for Maggie, and everything else. And they went on a fun trip. I was fed up with their ludicrously insensitive attitudes. They accused me of slacking on my chores, but they put everything on me. They forced me to care for Maggie when they should have been the ones to do so. They uncared and left a disabled family member behind. Why should I be treated like this? I tried to suppress my uncontrollable anger by clenching my fists. I took a deep breath and calmed my nerves, not to go crazy. I had to prepare Maggie's meal. I headed for the kitchen in despair. I put the meal on a tray and went to Maggie's room. It wasn't that I didn't want to take care of her. I liked her and enjoyed making small talk and complaining to each other. What I didn't like was the attitude of Kathy and Adam. They imposed various things on me as if it was normal. It pissed me off. I shook my head to shake off the anger. Maggie, I'm coming in. I knocked and opened the door. She was up in bed, stretching. Good morning, Beth. Good morning. You seem to be in good shape this morning. I saw her grinning meaningfully at me as I put down the tray on the table. I returned a curious gaze. She stuck her legs out of the bed, and then stood up quickly in a huff. What the? I was startled. I knew her leg was recovering well, but it was still supposedly difficult to stand by herself. She stood up smoothly and without any hindrance. Looking at my face, she laughed like a child who had successfully pulled a prank. How do you? I used to compete as a high school athlete in track and field. I still couldn't understand what she was trying to say. She saw my puzzled expression and explained what had happened. Track and field was her passion when she was young, and she spent all her spare time training. Leg injuries were almost a daily occurrence back then, so she knew what to do when she got injured. Thanks to her precise initial response, the injury did not worsen, and she was able to recover faster than usual. In addition to having trained her muscles well from a young age, she still took walks on a daily basis. She must have maintained her strengths. No wonder her legs and back were strong. Remembering how she always walked with a beautiful posture, I was oddly convinced. I was bored just laying still in bed, so I was doing rehabilitation secretly. She had recently regained the ability to walk after a diligent routine. Of course, she was also doing it at the hospital, but it was not enough for her. Her active, always on the move attitude was so like her that I couldn't help laughing. She suddenly made a serious expression and walked toward me. I am very sorry, not only about taking care of me, but dealing with Kathy and Adam's insane attitude. I am truly sorry. She gave me a tight hug. I flustered and said, "Please don't be." I was angry at those two, but that wasn't something that Maggie should have apologized for. Besides, I really enjoyed hanging out with her. So let me return the favor. Hmm? I heard that before. I tilted my head, not understanding what she meant. 
and Maggie held out her hands to me. What goes around comes around. Let's remind those two of that. I looked at her hand, stunned, and then at her face. She was looking at me with a wonderful smile on her face. She was right. There was no point in enduring them. The treatment I received was absurd and unreasonable. Then, of course, I had the right to retaliate. The anger that I had tried so hard to suppress just a minute ago welled up again. If I was bullied, I would retaliate. I would double the payback. I muttered this to myself and took her hand as she held it out to me. A week has passed since then. It was a cloudless, calm afternoon when my phone vibrated. Knowing who it was, I answered it without checking the screen. Hey, what's going on here? I laughed at the voice and the question, just as I had expected them to be. What are you talking about? I knew exactly why he sounded so agitated. Still, I asked deliberately, "Why is my grandma's house up for sale?" Adam yelled over the phone. A little further away, I heard the Kathy fussing. Hearing her, my smile widened even more. After Maggie and I colluded, she took immediate action. First, she called her lawyer and changed the wills she had prepared. Her assets that were supposed to be inherited by Kathy and Adam were going to the children's sports charity. Her retaliation did not end there. On the same day she had changed her will, she went to the real estate agent and put the house on sale. I was shocked by this, but she told me that the mover and her next residence had already been arranged. She planned to live alone in an apartment with a helper until she could find a good nursing home. I vividly remembered her smiling with a refreshed expression. She did all this during the week Kathy and Adam were gone. Perhaps she had been preparing it for a long time. Otherwise, it wouldn't have gone so smoothly. She couldn't bear to see her daughter and grandson behaving as they did. Maggie sniffed out. What the hell? Why? Well, I think she got tired of you guys leaving everything to me. Adam was annoyed by my nonchalant tone and burst into anger. It's you, isn't it? You said something to her, didn't you? You don't even work, and you think you're so smart. You're just a wife who fails to do what he's supposed to do. You pull this stupid shit. His angry voice overlapped with Kathy's scream. That was when my anger reached a boiling point. Who's pulling the stupid shit? Startled by my sudden outburst, their confusion seeped through the phone. You're the ones who are running away from your responsibilities. Who do you think you are, putting everything on my shoulders? I'm not your servant or housekeeper. I slammed the words at him as if punching him in the face. He seemed to be searching for words. Trying to say something, but not a single word came out. And by the way, I'm divorcing you. I've grown tired of you too. I said it in a way that I really didn't care about him. What? I heard a surprised voice in reply. When Maggie and I visited her lawyer, I also consulted him about my divorce. I hung up the phone to ignore him, who was ranting nonsense. Then I blocked his phone number. When I finished my work and took a breath, Maggie, who was sitting on the brand new sofa, laughed. I hope I have repaid the favor. I turned my body toward her and smiled radiantly. Yes, for sure. After that, Adam and Kathy lived together in the small apartment where he and I used to live. Kathy. Who was apparently counting on Maggie's inheritance refused to work. 
Adam's salary was not so great, but her extravagance was still the same, and they fought every day. They tried to borrow money from relatives, but Maggie had already laid the groundwork. No one wanted to help them. Some time later, I encountered a little incident. When I was shopping at a local supermarket, I heard yelling. I was astounded to see what was going on through the crowd. There was Kathy arguing with another customer. She was just about to grab the security guard who was trying to stop her. I saw her fall down, but I didn't know what happened afterward. I wasn't interested, and I didn't want to have anything to do with her anymore. Rumor has it that she broke her bone and needs care, but she has no one and is at her wit's end. Furthermore, I found out that Adam Eustace paid a family leave to go to Bahamas. I don't know where the leak came from, but it got out to his office. His co-workers still look at him with dismay. He fails to find a new job and is still working at the same office, feeling ashamed of himself. And as for me, my divorce was finalized without a hitch. I have a new job as a caregiver and work at a nursing home near my house. Maggie now lives at a facility I work at. She is spending her days to the fullest every day. There are always a lot of people around her. She is very active and friendly, and is very popular there. I even envy her a little. She notices me and beckons me over with a smile. I smile back and head over to her, thinking of the new days ahead.